Hey guys, it's me again. It seems that I've been a very lucky boy. I've got some uh, more special goodies, this time from a company we all know, The Fat Shark. I'm feeling very privileged to have one of these in my hot little hand, which I can't open with one hand. It's the Bite Frost. Okay, so I'm going to talk over myself at this point because, let's face it, what we really want is to see how this stuff looks when it's flying. Now, for the first time ever, I'm going to write a little bit of a script for this video because there are a lot of points I want to cover. Uh, so yes, I'm reading now, but if I make it up on the spot, I'm sure I'll miss something important that I wanted to talk about. So here we are in everybody's favourite park, Pine Cones. I chose this location to test because we've been coming here for many years and I know exactly what the RF is like in just about every part of the park. We're looking at the DJI DVR here in the low latency, um, low quality mode, uh, but with focus mode turned on. So that allocates more bandwidth to the center of the picture, as you can see with the blurry bits on the side. Personally, I find it quite off-putting and distracting, um, especially in the low quality mode, but that seems to be how most people are flying it, so I thought I'd test it like that first. So what I did was try to fly the same place as in the park with all the systems, um, hitting all the spots where I know I normally get little bursts of interference and static. So the first of these was a long loop down to the end and back through the row of trees, and then a little bit of freestyle. And with analog, that often resulted in a fair burst of static and sometimes even an RSSI warning. So now we're on to my favourite little penetration test, flying through the bush. Uh, this basically used to be impossible in the early days before diversity receivers and uh, nice directional antennas, but rapid fires made this uh, a lot more feasible, but it's still very scratchy um, to fly through there in analogue. So next up, I flew the DJI unit in high quality mode with the focus mode off. I wanted to see what the unit was capable of in sort of the best quality mode that, that you can set it up with. So as you can see the picture is nicer and the edges aren't blurry but I can tell you I could feel the increased latency. Uh, it wasn't awful but it was just there like a thickness between myself and the quad and it's, this is the thing that highlights the core problem with the DJI system is that the latency is variable. So as pilots we can adjust and we can cope with quite a lot of latency uh, once we get used to it but if it's changing all the time it makes proximity flying a lot trickier and racing is pretty much impossible. So you know I'm obviously not Thomas Bitmata or Min Chan Kim but I am good enough to feel the DJI dropping frames and increasing latency when this happens. So you know towards the end of the day I hit a tree and I heard the impact before I actually saw it uh, which is kind of bad really. Anyway on to the bite frost. So, as you can see, the system doesn't have the same sharpness as the DJI, but this is due in part to the camera. Uh, and it's important to note that this is the stock camera on stock settings, uh, and I haven't even tweaked it. So I have a second camera to test made by Runcam. Um, I wasn't able to get it going for that uh, day of testing, so what you're seeing is just what was in the box. Uh, what I'm getting at is that I don't think the current camera is squeezing the best possible performance out of the system and that things you know, have a lot of room to improve just like they did with analog. If you can remember what the old analog cameras were like, you'll know how much better they are now. So what's more important to note with this footage is how the signal degrades. Unlike the DJI which adds that sort of blurry JPEG-like compression, the bite frost just drops out little parts of the picture. And the way it degrades to static, I find it's actually really analog-like. It's really easy to fly through. There's no variable latency. Um, and it's sort of just, yeah, intuitive. If you've come from analog, it just makes sense to your brain. You'll see that it gets a bit sketchy in here, but it's completely fly fine to fly through. Um, and I found, yeah, the way it degraded a lot less jarring than the DJI. That uh, might be in part due to the smaller image in my HDOs. When you've got a bigger image, all the problems get magnified, but it just felt better to fly um, due to that latency not changing as well. Now here's the same parts of the park on analog. I actually forgot my own quad, like an idiot. So um, 
Craig from Impulse, who was there at the time, was kind enough to let me fly his shiny brand new Apex. Um, yeah, all I'll say about this footage is to those people who are saying that Bite Frost is barely better than analog, you clearly have no idea. I don't understand people in this hobby sometimes. The other thing to note here, of course, is that I'm using the rapid fire, and the quality from that is much, much better than what we used to get with the older receivers, especially when flying through the bush like this and um, going into the sketchier parts of the park. So we'll finish up with a little four-way head-to-head. DJI is up the top, Bite Frost and Analog on the bottom. Uh, of course, the footage here doesn't sync up perfectly, but it does highlight some of the little differences between the systems quite nicely. So, conclusions. Well, I really like the Bite Frost. Of course, I have biases. Um, I'm trying to be impartial here, but I do have friendship with Greg from Fat Shark, and I do have strong opinions on DJI as a company as well. All I can suggest is that you take on board the key points about what I'm going to say and what you've already seen, make your own decisions. I'm not being paid anything by anyone, but you could definitely call me a strong supporter of Fat Shark for various reasons. Um, I that go back quite a few years. So that said, there's no denying that the DJI system has some really strong points. Uh, in terms of outright image quality, it beats the Bite Frost. But the problem is that that image quality can vary quite a lot, especially when it has to deal with fast moving objects and trees and grass and, you know, scraggle. So you go up high and everything looks amazing, but it's, it's less ahead image wise when you're down on the ground flying really fast. DJI also wins in terms of outright signal penetration. There's no surprise in that given it's 700 milliwatts versus Bite Frost's 450. Um, antennas have a lot to do with that too. My understanding is the DJI goggles have the ability to request resends for dropped packets, so you, you miss less information, but if you've tried them in spectator mode when it's not doing this, you know how awful that looks. So it's pretty critical uh, that they're doing this for the pilot. The DJI also loses out on the ergonomics, as we all know how uncomfortable their goggles are, unless your name is Biakotto. Both systems currently lose out in the OSD department, but that's an entirely fixable thing in the future. Uh, it's just software. DJI's OSD is pretty proprietary though, and uh, the Bite Frost, I think we're, we're talking about hooking that up to um, Bitflight OSD, so it's going to be a lot more open. So there's no, there's no denying that the DJI goggles have it over the current generation of HDOs though, uh, in terms of um, field of view and, and things like that, but flying with Bite Frost is a much nicer experience than it is with analog. Bite Frost though does manage the 4x3 to 16x9 picture cropping much more nicely though, you don't lose any vertical resolution, unlike DJI's implementation. Image quality and raw penetration aside, I think the key differentiator with these two systems is the latency factor and the way both systems degrade as the signal fades. I find the Bite Frost's digital static much more easy to fly through than DJI's jumpy jumpy drop frame magic with the variable latency. Uh, it's only a factor when you're at the limit of range, but it is an important one. So I think they both fulfill different niches and different needs in the hobby. Uh, I'm also a big fan of the open nature of the hobby community and DJI are pretty much the antithesis of this. It's a closed system with proprietary hardware. You can't even use it without activating it. There's no HDMI in or out on the goggles and good luck getting in touch with them to discuss your next favourite feature to implement in their OSD or other possible improvements. You know, there's, there's just no channel of communication there. Whereas Fat Shark, of course, are quite active in the community. So, for the existing hobbyist already has a set of goggles already, Bite Frost feels like a natural evolution. Um, it's early days. Um, both systems are very much plug and play, but the Bite Frost is slightly smaller, possibly a bit more suitable to racing frames as a result. Um, but yes, as I said, it's early days. Bite Frost is still considered to be a beta product and the nice thing is that things can only get better from here. 
if you see the footage of this thing from a year ago when I first tested it, it's come along in leaps and bounds. So as long as the community supports the manufacturers who are continuing to innovate, um, things will improve. You know, if you want to support the cloners and the great big corporate behemoths, that's fine, but enjoy, enjoy your, the future that you've created. Uh, one last thing to note about this whole video is that there's going to be frame rate and resolution mismatches with your monitors and devices because the video is being rendered at 60 frames a second. Um, I'm doing that because that's most likely what you're watching it in, but the Byte Frost DVR footage is 50 and the analog footage is 25, so you might notice some jumping that's not reflective of what it's actually like to fly. Uh, the picture is also upscaled and of course re-encoded multiple times, so what you see on YouTube isn't actually a true reflection of what you will see in your goggles. We all know this, but it doesn't hurt to bear it in mind when judging the video. Um, I'll try and put the original source videos up somewhere for people to download if they want. You can uh, make your own comparisons at home. So have a look in the description for those. Anyway, that's about enough rambling from me. Um, hit me up with your questions below and thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe and help validate my existence. Uh, it gives me lots of dopamine hits when you do that. The truth is I don't actually care, but um, yep. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the park. Bye now.